This is a test. This station was conducting a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. <laughs> This concludes this test of the emergency broadcast system. Cool. All right. Well, very nice to meet your acquaintance. Where, <laughs> where are you guys? I mean, um, Amsterdam. In and, where? Uh, Amsterdam. You're in Sudan? Um, Amsterdam. You're going to have to say that one more time. Yeah. Uh, Amsterdam. You're in Amsterdam, right? Okay. Amsterdam. Sorry. Very different to Sudan. <laughs> that was a good that's very different. Different. Yeah, that, that, all, all that, yeah. I'm, I'm pleased that we've established that before we proceed. What about you, man? Uh, I'm in Stockholm. Oh, okay, right. So we've 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 gone proper uh, European um, here, haven't we? International, hmm. yeah. Are you are you all based in different cities across Europe, or? Uh, so we two are in Europe, and then uh, the rest of the guys in London. Dash. Japan sometimes yeah you were all in Hackney at one point though right well yeah, yeah. we that's where we sort of started and um we, we all used to live in in Hackney yeah and how we lost each other actually <laughs> yeah how uh how does the band work now that there is some uh that there's some miles between you um so for shows I think uh whenever we got uh shows a series of shows basically we um if we, when we can we basically get up in london again and in the studio we were uh, we're renting um so we rehearsed for like a few days before sets off and then um play shows and then so for writing we kind of been and um, trying to do all the internet <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i mean yeah. like exchanging files and yeah, so, kind of. We trying to, yeah, we're trying to kind of get on with that. Cool. But it's, yeah, it's different. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's. Uh, I imagine there's advantages and negatives to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think both sides. Yeah. So I thought I'd jump straight in and ask you, and that was the that was the uh, the police car that regularly speeds past my window. Sorry about that. Um, I I thought I'd get straight in and talk to you about the about the Holy Mountain release. Um, t tell me how that came to be. Uh, so, I guess you probably uh, are aware of the what we did the live score before, back in 2019. Yeah. Again, back in Hackney, in the real cinema. Yeah. Uh, with the same uh, promoter, actually, the Deeper Into Movies guys. And then, basically... We were supposed to do just one night, but the real cinema, uh, and then we basically sold out very quickly. And then with the popular demand, apparently, and then we decided to do the second night. And that nearly sold out too. So basically it went really, really well. And um, we really enjoyed it. And so we just uh, kept hearing from people, friends, as like, you guys definitely should release that. Or like, we should do that again or record that or release it whatever a live recording or maybe do in a studio again so i know we just all totally agreed on that like it was such a special experience and and um uh so yeah so so we came back to talk to the refreshment center again our studio where we normally practice um to record so basically we we recreated the what we did in live school back in then but then with a different of a uh, bit of amendments and changes to more polish up and yeah, more like properly recorded like uh, yeah or, yeah how did you well i guess i guess the question is though and you know this is obviously casting your mind back a little bit but why why did you go to uh Hodorowsky's 
holding mountain in the first place? Uh, actually, so when deeper into yeah movies got in touch with us, they suggested Holy Mountain. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, people like we always been a big fan of the, the film. Um, but um, so yeah, good for them. They basically came out that hey, you guys are for like doing live sound for the, this film screening the Holy Mountain. So, yeah, and we're like yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a very <laughs> simple answer. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah. Yes, so, so what, did they actually commission you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was Was there any kind of brief? No. No, we we, we, we had a sort of control, like a creative control, uh, yeah, over the yeah. project, yeah. I mean, but, it's, been, it's been some time since I've watched The Holy Mountain, I'll be honest. Um you know, I mean, I, I don't think it's any kind of breaking news that, as movies go, it's a trip. Um, I, I feel like with that movie, there is a lot of, there's a, I would imagine there's a lot of freedom, like you can yeah, yeah. kind of go all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what was it like? Like, how much of it did you plot, and how much of it did you, to use that horrible word, jam? <laughs> I, th I think we have like I can't say like exactly how much, but like we had. I mean, it's so 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 the film is basically like it can be split into like three big parts, like the first journey, and then the second part, like disciples, and then, and another journey. So 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 the second part, the disciple part, we had like songs, uh, like planets and stuff. And the first and second half, we have like a uh, basic framework. And then we have lots of freedom to say, like, uh, improvise within that framework. So it's, so it's, it's like half quite composed and half very free. Yeah, I, I, I suppose really the songs are almost like the tent poles that support the again another word that i feel uncomfortable with sometimes but to support the experimentation really <laughs> yeah how many t how many times do you think in the creation of this piece how many times do you think you watched the movie uh, I'm, I'm really confident it's like we are the one of the the very um Few people did watch it you know, over like twenty times. Yeah, I mean, with it, yeah, but not crazy times, um, like hundred or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think a handful times. But it's just the more important to see because we kind of have to, as we play on stage, we kind of obviously have to know the change of scenes and cuts the to go with the music or the the sound that we're making. So. You know those small bits and details, but like, not like going through a whole film. You know, so maybe not many times, not even. Well, I mean, over twenty times is is a it, fair. I mean, it's very um, quite draining. Uh, exp <laughs> I mean, movie <laughs> It's quite intense. You know, I mean, yeah. It, it kind of like drew lots of like. Um, I mean, obviously, there are lots of inspiration from the actual uh, film, like like uh, visuals. So, like we kind of, sort of like used it as a uh, graphic score kind of thing. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so we must have watched it like many times. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean a graphic score? Graphic gra score, like a uh, score. Scoring. Yeah. So it was a part of even visually the watching. The Holy Mountain was a part of the composing. Oh, okay, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, in, instead of like usual like music notations, like with with like lines and thing. Like, yeah, I, I think I think I understand what you're saying. I I I have some experience of making music, but I am fascinated by the idea. I'm fascinated by the idea of uh, providing a soundtrack to. A mo to to a pre-existing piece of media, so 
forgive me if I'm kind of probing in how this was constructed, because I really have no idea how you would do this. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we, I mean, I personally don't really remember how we actually came up, like when we say, look, day one, okay, how should we do this? And then, you know, it's a two hour length film, full feature. And yeah, how should we tackle? <laughs> I can't actually remember how we did that. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> right. like, but it did, you know, we just the our members are quite organically like Kohei said briefly but there's a, a ba basic uh division into like brief into three different parts of the movie and um scoring um so yeah i mean it's great it, it was it's a such a quite inspiring uh, experience just to just to write the piece for itself um I mean, I guess that watching the movie that many times, you, you're saying that it's not actually that many times at all. But you know, I would say my favorite band, my favorite film was um, I don't know. I really like Jaws. I bet you I haven't seen Jaws more than twenty times. You know, so like it's a lot. That is a lot of viewings. In that time of in that time of watching it and thinking about it and composing to it, do you think you understand what that movie's about? Because I'm not sure I completely understand what that movie's about. Good question. Yeah. That's a good no, point. Not, yeah. not, not, Jaws. Jaws is about right. a shark. <laughs> Jaws is about a shark, but uh, it was about yeah, killer shark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe there's so, some hidden meaning behind. It. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think that I, to, to be fair, I think there is a little bit in there that's about family and community. But we digress. Um, <laughs> what, what's, what's Holy Mountain about? I'm not sure I could give an answer to that question. Don't, I don't know. Like, I think like. Uh, each of us, each of us, like four of us, had kind of a different point of view, like different understanding of the of the film. But it can be seen as like like one man. Um, so um, uh, go journey through his own mind, and then finally comes back to. Uh, reality. I'm saying that that's what I thought. I, th I think that might be making it, I think that might be confusing it even more for me. Mm. So, so that, uh, yeah, I was, I, I, I was listening to the, the, the music we made earlier today and then, um, looking through like kind of like, um, notes we made like when when we were writing the film and then like um so from from the three big division of the film the the first part is like kind of like it um it looks so delusional like and then and then the second part the disciple part right it's like Kind of like representing those of um, different aspects of this person, and then the 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 third part, final part, is like this kind of like tripping guys, so like regaining his own reality. So that's um that's that's like his like mind journey kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, that's as clear as day. I completely understand it now. Thank you for explaining that to me. <laughs> uh, um, I, actually, I, I remember reading when I first watched that movie when I was a student that um, uh, that Hodorowsky, he he had this Zen master, this Japanese Zen master, who he experimented with uh, sleep deprivation before he made that movie. And I also remember him ordering some of the actors to... Uh, to take psychedelics when they mm. when they when they were filming, so right. I think so I think it's completely fine that we don't really understand it. But I always that, thought it had, I always thought it had something to do with I always thought it had something to do with like the that it was almost sort of like a critique of the idea of heaven in a way. Like the, the, I mean, mm. I'm not I'm not explaining that very well, but that's always kind of what I took from it that it was almost about 
it was almost sort of like a celebration of simple pleasures as opposed to like a ter- like eternal wonder. Um, th- this might be why I made my living as a music critic as opposed to a film critic because that's not the greatest of uh, uh, dissections of the movie. But that's what that's always what I took from it. Uh, but yeah. still, I think it'd be better if there were some sharks in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, I guess just spoil no spoilers or it doesn't matter because it's not the whole point of this. Uh, yeah, thing, yeah, but, yeah. You know the the end, the very end scene, and you know what happens. I'm I'm pretty sure you remember like uh, Todorovsky himself, or like kind of speaking to the audience, and um, yeah, this is all bloody like fake. This is this is just a movie, and um, and considering all the time it's been made, and you know all this like psych- psychedelics and. Um, I guess that at one point in my head, the thing, or maybe he was just like, it didn't give it like any single shit. Like, <laughs> just he just wanted to like make something absolutely like non, like mad and nonsense. Um, um, I know there must be definitely like much deeper into that. Like, well, I, well, I think this is it. Sometimes I think this yeah, is it's like I, I, I kind of have this like a two kind of extreme um, idea. Uh, about this film, like some of the one of the probably deepest thing uh, going on, uh, but by this alchemist. But then in the other, at the other end of my head, that like yeah, this is just like that. I just he, he just want to go mad. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I think this is one of the things that's really interesting about art. And I sometimes I, I sometimes wonder. I remember I remember being in um I remember being in a gallery once, and some people. Uh, it was a gallery where there was some Picasso exhibited, and I think Picasso is. This is not breaking news by any stretch of the imagination, but I think Picasso is very interesting. And there were a bunch of people who were sort of pondering about what this. I can't remember what piece it was, but what this piece meant. And I sort of just had this like image of Picasso, just kind of like laughing from the great beyond, just kind of at the attempts to try and understand something that really, yeah. perhaps, he just kind of created for his own amusement. And that and that, that does that does make me think a little bit about music writing. I I think this thing about Boning Boninger. I remember reading an interview with you once when you said you almost said acid rock. What's acid rock? You know, because people always describe you as acid acid rock, right? Whatever that is. And yeah. I do feel like your band. You've had an extraordinary amount of bullshit written about your band. People love just throwing adjectives around when they're writing about Boningen. What do you think that people get wrong about your band? Um, yeah, not, not much like wrong, like adjective. Like some, I remember. I oh know I can't remember. There, 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 there are some weird ones. Like, no, it's just. So I, I, sh- I should have write it down or um so uh, here's the one uh jazzed up acid punk that's that's also like completely like like bonkers it's like it sounds so cool i want to hear what sounds like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what i mean like it's, i mean so yeah i mean like cause none of them like wrong or uh we did a good bad impression with um because I'm sure some part of the music could, there's an essence of metal in it, big riff, um, like some punk um, as well. Um, so yeah, I guess just this. I, I think it just make more fun for people to <laughs> categorize like music, yeah, like what, we, like what we do. Yeah, because yeah, it's I mean, kind of hard to. It is hard to. Describe like well, c- kind of. I mean, I, I mean, I would just describe it as a psychedelic rock band. I think that kind of covers everything that it needs to cover. Really, um, I think that I think there was a period with music writing, really before the internet, where there was some real validity in attempting to describe music in such a way. And I think that now when people can just listen to the music for themselves, that it's not required so much. And I actually think that there's a challenge in the way that we write about music and also art because of that. 
you know, it's you're not trying to describe something to someone who has no access to the music itself. But I also I'm quite fond in a way of of uh, of, of music journalists throwing around descriptors. But I just feel like your band get it more than more than a lot of bands you know i sort of read reviews of your records and i go I, i'm not really learning much about what this record's about but i'm sure being sent on some strange linguistic journeys along the way interesting yeah i mean my favorite could be i mean no one i think i've ever called us this way but not as in genre but i really like that uh just the words combination words like hard rock <laughs> like i said not as in as, like, in, it, as in genre in the in the record shop see, see what i mean oh, maybe, yeah. so maybe maybe because i'm not like a native english speaker like because it is it's hard and then <laughs> i know this sounds a bit silly but um I feel like you get a lot of that in Japan, actually, in record shops. There was a record shop that I remember. But the massive, the massive, like uh, those heavy metals and um, those market huge. Yeah, shops. yeah. I, 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 I've been to some of the best record shops I've ever been to when I was in was when I was in Tokyo, and I remember kind of going in, and there, there would be little descriptors about the records. I remember thinking, yeah, that, it's not just music journalists that sort of create strange genres for music there's a lot of it in good record shops as well you know so yeah um you, you're doing the um, obviously you did the performance at the uh the legendary rio in dalston um years back but you're doing it at earth this time right in march yeah yeah um earth is the venue in london that has the most painful seats of any venue in london is so it? if i didn't yeah. know about that yeah, I really think you need to inform your fan base that they need to bring cushions. It is oh. the, seat, the seats are very painful. Is that um, okay? But it being Dolst it being Dalston a little bit further up uh, towards Stoke Newington, and obviously it's a good excuse for a kebab. You know, I'm a big fan of a kebab. Um, why why Earth though? Why not the Rio? Um, again, I don't know. We um. I guess we wanted to play somewhere different, uh, bigger, um, but in a sort of same context. Um, um, it's in, it's interesting it not being a theatre, so so to speak. It actually being a venue is, I suppose, very different. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when we start kind of talking about this um, album launch, or maybe it could be... Um, or could Barbican could be amazing, or like Southbound Centre could be amazing, but um, I guess it didn't happen. They either basically just can't afford it, or um, there's no availability, or uh, lots of different mechanics. I think um, didn't work out, um, and then we kind of start talking to deeper into movies guys again, and then let's do it together, and then they they came up with uh, with that. That's so, cool. That's and, cool. Yeah, and, and then actually it made so much sense for us. I mean, it's a literally what like two minutes walk away from Rio, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's... same town, same pub. Yeah, you know, all, yeah. It's like all joking aside about the seats, it is a really great venue. Uh, so no, I um, if I if I can uh, if I can find a cushion, I'll, I'll I'll come along. I've got to ask you before we wrap up. Um, well, I'll, I'll ask you two things. One. Uh, where are you at with your not that this record isn't your own music, but where are you at with a, a, a new release in the sort of more conventional way that you've released records before? It's been a little while since the last record. Um, so yeah, like uh, like I said earlier, very pleased. So we, we were kind of working on remotely, uh, for the new stuff, and um. Uh, which is kind of like slow because uh, I guess some of us, I'm, I'm not really like tech savvy either, like, you know, all the softwares and stuff. Um, um, anyhow, like kind of taking a bit of time, but um, yeah, so we're basically working on a few, few different uh, music. And, uh, got quite a lot of ideas. And, yeah. um, 
But it's, yeah. it's a totally different way, like working on music compared yeah. to what, what we used to. We, we used to just like say like jam, like for hours, yeah. and, like cut up jams and like edit it. And that's, that's how we used to compose, like compose and make music. So now, now that we have like more um, own spaces, each of us. So we have I like um, too much elements to put into one song or like whatever. Like it's it's so different. So it's taking. Yeah, I, th- I I think that I think it's quite exciting in a way, though. You know, I think that yeah. I think that people create art dependent on whatever perimeters exist to make. I'll say that again. That sounded a bit mumbly. I think people make art dependent on what the perimeters to make art within are at any one time. So I think that actually, you know, it's like when you pick up a different instrument to what you don't normally use. I think that you write things in a different way because of playing that. You know, so so I, I am really interested to see what this new uh, trans-European uh, era of boning and produces. I think that's exciting. Yeah, it's nice to hear. Like, yes. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, thanks, thanks. thanks. I thought, yeah. Well, what I, what I was going to say secondly, you should uh, maybe just for me, just as a personal little project from Boningen to James, why don't you score Jaws just for me? You can put Jaws on, write some songs about sharks, send it over, and that can be what you do next. Yeah, that sounds yeah. actually really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take this as a verbal contract. <laughs> <laughs> verbal contract. <laughs> Um, I mean, because Jaws is such an amazing film. Yeah, it's, amazing. Actually, yeah, it's like it's classic. Yeah, I think every time I watch Jaws, I mean, I know it's a very mainstream movie, but every time I watch Jaws, I just think this movie's got everything that I want from a movie. I, I just think it's a, you know, I think that you know, if you've been slightly critical, you could say, oh, the shark kind of looks crap, but it doesn't really look crap. Like I just think on every level that film's amazing. No disrespect yeah. to the holy, Ma- no, no disrespect to the holy mountain, but yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah, let's the do one it. can say, "Oh, Godfather is a masterpiece," but someone else say, "Oh, no, no, Jaws." It's so I, mean, I think it's that level of you know different spectrum, obviously different, completely what, different things. But. What you should, what you should do is um, don't do this. It's a terrible idea, and will probably end your career. But it, you should write some songs about Jaws, write some songs about sharks, and then when everyone turns up to earth expecting you to soundtrack the holy mountain you should just play the songs about sharks <laughs> and then we'll go for a kebab it'll be a great night out <laughs> we're about showing holy mountain instead <laughs> i love that i love that <laughs> i love that <laughs> oh no a great night will be had by all yeah um listen boningen thank you so much for speaking to me on the podcast um thanks so much james uh, yeah it's been a real treat thank you i'll speak to you again thanks. yeah, yeah.